Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to see how we can get the shared text from other applications. For example, you have selected text in your phone many times and then you have shared this text through different applications. Now we want to see how we can get this text inside our application and receive it so that we can process it. So if we click on share, we can see that our app appears here. And if we click on our application, we go to our app and the text that we selected is shared and received inside our application. So this is useful when you want to process the text somehow. For instance, if your application is a note-taking application and the user is reading an article and selects a sentence inside the article and clicks on the share, then your application appears in the menu and you can get the text inside your application and share it as a note. So for this, we need to use receive sharing intent package which makes it straightforward and very easy to implement this package works for android and ios so first we add receive sharing intent to our pubspec.yaml file next we need to do some modifications on the android part so in the android we go to app source main and then we open android manifest.xml in this file you can see that we have intent filter this is available by default so we need to add another intent filter so this intent filter is the opening tag and this one slash intent filter is the closing tag so we need another intent filter the opening tag and the closing tag and inside this, we are going to define our intent. This is basically means that your application declares that it has intention to receive text. So we have the first one is the action, Android intent action send. The next one is the category, which is default. And next one is data. This is important because this is where you define what type of data you are accepting in your application. For this application, it is text plain. But if your application needs to receive images, you can change this to image. And then when an image is shared, the Android system knows that your application is capable of receiving an image, so it's going to display it inside the share menu. So after this modification to the Android manifest.xml file, we go to main.dart. Inside main.dart, we import the receive sharing intent package. And here it is a normal Flutter application. Here we are creating a string called shared text to hold the text that is shared. Next, inside the init state, we are going to create listeners because the package that we are going to use works based on listening to an event. So the first one is receive sharing intent dot get text string dot lesson a string is the type and then the value is the name of the variable so we check if the value is not null we are going to set a state we are going to assign the value to the shared text variable that we defined before otherwise if there is error we need to handle it the same is implemented with get initial text and this is if the application was terminated, then this will extract the shared data. Because when the text is shared, there are a couple of states that your app might have. One is that your application is running in the foreground or in the background. Or basically it is running, but in another state, your application is terminated and it is completely closed. So we need these two methods to tell the Android system how to handle various states of the application. 
and in the build we just have a simple text widget that says shared text and then it is going to display the shared text obviously in your application you can get this shared text and you can process it you can save it as a note and you can apply lots of different processing methods on the text so that's a very simple and easy way to get the shared text. This is all thanks to this receive sharing intent package. If we didn't use the package, we would have to go to Android section of our Flutter application and we needed to write some code in native Java code or native Kotlin code. But using this package, it's going to make it very easy. This works for Android and iOS, but for the iOS, you need to do some extra modifications inside the iOS part of the Flutter, just like we did in the Android part of the Flutter application. If you are interested, please let me know and I will share some articles that shows how to do it for the iOS application. That's it for this video. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.